In this video, we're going to discuss how to record a net operating loss in financial accounting. So when a firm loses money, the IRS will allow the firm to take that loss and to use it to offset past or future taxable income. So for example, if the firm had lost money in either of the prior two years, it can carry back the loss to get a refund of the tax that it paid. Alternatively, if a firm can also carry forward the, the tax loss to offset any profits in the future. So they can go and say, okay, look, we lost $100,000 this year, but if we make 50000 next year, we'll be able to offset that. We can carry forward the loss and kind of eliminate that tax we would have otherwise had to pay in the future. So I want to show you how this works. Let's say that you run a pet grooming business and you, you have a really successful pet grooming business. You take care of, of cats, of dogs, of tarantulas, people's pets, their beloved pets, and you clean them up, make them look beautiful, and the tax rate that your firm faces is 40%. And so here's what happened. Here's a financial situation for the last four years for, for your firm. So let's say that you, you made 50000 62000 80000 but then in year four, the pet grooming business collapsed, there was a catastrophe, and you lost $200,000. Now, you have a net operating loss, otherwise called an NOL. You have a net operating loss, so you don't pay any tax in year four, right? You lost money, so you're not going to be paying any tax. However, what you can do is you can carry back the loss, so you can go back two years or forward 20, right? And you could do both if you have enough of the loss. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, I've got this 200000 here. And what I could do is I could offset the previous year's taxable income and then the year before that. However, from year one, that's too far back. That's too far back. You cannot offset this 50000 Even if you had a million-dollar loss, you would not be able to do it. So we're going to offset the 80000 and the 62000 So you're going to be offsetting $142,000 in previously taxed income. So what does that mean? Well, your tax rate was 40%. So if you're saying, okay, well, $142,000 of this current loss, we're going to go back and, and take that. And the reason I get the 142 is just the $62,000 plus the $80,000. So if we get a refund of this, right, the tax we had paid on those was $24,800 plus $32,000. So that adds up to $56,800, and you're going to debit income tax refund receivable, right? So this is a receivable. You're going to get a refund from the IRS of $56,800. So that's that $142,000 times 40%. Just want to make that clear. So you're getting $142,000. You've carried it back at a 40% tax rate. So you're going to get $56,000, $56,800 back from the IRS, and you're going to credit, to make this balance, you're going to credit income tax expense. So remember, it's an expense. Expenses increase with a debit, decrease with a credit. So you're reducing your income tax expense that period by $56,800. Now, you still have some of your net operating loss left over, right? Because, look, you have a $200,000 loss, but you carried it back, 142000 that you got the refund for, but that still leaves $58,000, right? You still have $58,000 here that you can now carry forward, right? You can mix it. You can say, okay, I carried back 142 and I still have 58000 of loss left over. I'm going to carry that forward. You can carry it forward up to 20 years. So it's basically the same idea. You don't know what your profit's going to be in the future, but you know that, okay, I can carry forward $58,000 of this $200,000 loss, carry it forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, look, in a future period, we're going to be able to offset $58,000 of future taxable income. So we take that $58,000 and we multiply it by 40%. That's the tax rate. That's how much tax you're actually going to save in the future. So we're going to have, that's going to be $23,000. $200. So what you're going to do is you're going to debit deferred tax assets. So you're not debiting refund receivable now. You've already done that. That's a separate that's that's separate. You're making a new entry to say, okay, in addition to this refund receivable, we have a deferred tax asset. We just remember deferred tax asset is going to reduce our taxes in a future period by $23,200. That's what we're saying. And then again, we're going to credit 
income tax expense. So that's what we're doing. We're basically saying that look, we, we're getting eighty thousand. If you if you add it up, if you add up the the fifty six eight and then the twenty three two, you're basically saying look, we're getting eighty thousand dollars in tax benefits. We're getting eighty thousand dollars in tax benefits. Now let's let's check and see if that's right. So we got two hundred thousand is our loss. So two hundred thousand times forty percent. And that equals eighty thousand, which is what our our loss that we carried forward, this deferred tax asset. And then if we add that with the refund receivable, it adds up to eighty thousand. Now you might be wondering, you might be wondering hypothetically, let's say the firm had said, well, we don't want to carry it back two years. We want to carry the full two hundred thousand forward the twenty years. We don't want a refund. Can we just carry the full two hundred thousand forward? And in that case, yes, you can do that. The firm can elect to carry it all forward and to say we don't want the refund from before. So then you would have the deferred tax asset for the full amount of $80,000. Now you might also be wondering, what if with this, this deferred tax asset of 23200 or if you carried it all forward, 80000 what if the firm does not have any taxable income in the future? What if they don't? recognize any profits in the next 20 years in that case in that case the deferred tax asset wouldn't be you wouldn't have any tax savings because the firm doesn't have any taxable income to be offset by these this nll and in that case we're going to have something called a deferred tax asset valuation allowance which we'll talk about in the next video